In the previous video, I used the reflector to pull apart exactly what the compiler is doing with yield. It dumps a whole ton of sugar onto the code. I've had a student actually comment that he gets a lot of diabetes from uh, C-sharp because there's so much sugar going on. But sugar's good. It helps us be productive, and, and so we like that as long as we understand what's going on. Anyway, let me explain what's going on. Remember this this get random numbers, it returned a new class. So I'm just going to say return, just like the compiler did, return new get random numbers class. And the name is completely arbitrary. I mean, the compiler's free to do what it wants. We don't see it in the end. Um, so we need to make a class that does the get random numbers for us. So let's... um. Let's mimic the compiler as much as possible. The compiler likes to maintain as narrow a scope as possible, so the compiler actually defines its generated class inside as a nested class of the class that the yield is used in. So class, uh, I guess I call it get random numbers class, so we'll put that there. Okay, and um, the compiler actually implements both interfaces of innumerable and innumerator of int. And so we'll we'll do both. I'm going to say i enumerable of int and i enumerator of int. And and at first this could be confusing. It could seem like some things are going on um, in this family that shouldn't be going on. Um, but really, if it's a slick, simple little trick the compiler's doing, I'll show you. Let's just uh, tell Visual Studio to implement both interfaces for us. So I'm just hitting Control Dot as I put my cursor over these, and then hitting Enter, and it fills in the details for us. Um, let's get rid of these uh, dot dot dots, and then just tell Visual Studio to put the using up at the top of the screen for us. Okay, so it looks like we have. The get enumerator, the generic version and non-generic version um, here that came from my enumerable, and then we also have current dispose uh, generic uh, current and the non-generic one that just returns object. Uh, all these things are from my enumerator. Okay. Now, just as the compiler does, throw new not implemented exception. I'm just going to do that because reset is useless. Uh, move next. We'll get to Except I'm not too keen on having these namespaces hang out there. So I'm actually just going to take them off because I have the using at the top of the file for it. Okay, good. So now, if, if, you're, if you're like me, uh, this I enumerator, I can, I, I can just rely on this method up here as a return value for this. I don't need to write the code in both places here. So I'm going to actually... Uh, call one from the other. I'm going to say return get enumerator. Okay, you would think that this get enumerator would resolve to this one and we'd have this endlessly recursive call, but no, the call actually ends up resolving to the non explicitly implemented uh, get enumerator. So since this this version is explicitly implemented, uh, if you need to touch up on the interface videos, do. Uh, basically, when I call get enumerator, it's not going to resolve to this one, it's actually going to resolve to this one which is nice. Okay, so so basically when I say get numerator on this thing, um, well this thing not only is it the i enumerable, but it is also the i, I enumerator. It's both. So I can just say, hey, return this. This instance. Because when you want to, you can treat this thing as an i enumerator, which is great. Okay, current dispose, well dispose doesn't need to do anything because we're not really doing anything that has anything to do with file connections or databases or things like that. So I'm actually going to move dispose down here where reset goes. And then um, current, same trick. I can just say return current. Okay, and then this will resolve to the non explicitly implemented current up here. And an int is an object, so that's legit. And hopefully, who's ever consuming this enumerator, enumerable thing, is using the generic version and not the old school dot net C sharp one oh have to use object version because Microsoft likes to release their stuff before it's finished deal. Okay? Sorry for the little jab there at Microsoft, but really they they released C sharp and dot net without generics originally back in two thousand ish, I think. And uh, now we have to deal with all these objects all over because marketing was too anxious to get the product out. So I'm actually going to collapse this one. I'm going to put my cursor up here, Control-MM, or I could have just hit the minus sign here at the left 
and and uh, actually let's put it down here so I don't have to really look at it because I'm really just interested in the in the move next and the current. In fact, the get numerators. Um, I'm actually satisfied that those are implemented correctly, and so we really need to get down to the meat of move next and current. And remember, we need to move next before we actually do current. So I'm going to put move next above current just so it kind of reads top down. Okay. Whew, what a workout. So now let's let's look at I'm gonna actually split the screen here so we can see um oh that's kinda interesting. <laughs> Little font change. Um let's bring that font down roughly the same level. Uh I wanna look at the I wanna look at the code I'm trying to implement and um the code I'm implementing at the same time. So let's go down here and okay. So first of all this for loop somehow needs to end up in my move next. Okay? So, when you think about it, anytime anybody calls move next, they're really just saying move on to the next random number. Okay? So, all the variables that I use down here in my code need to become data members of my ienumerator ienumerable thing. Okay? So, forgive me, but just to get, I want to get these ienumerable uh, methods out of the way. I'm just going to dump them at the bottom as well and collapse them so I don't have to stare at them anymore. Okay, so what variables are there? Well, there's there's count. Okay, every time we call get random numbers, we can pass in a different count, so I need to keep track of count. Um, and there's i. And then I'm using ran.next, but ran.next is not declared nor defined in get random numbers. It's actually if you remember, I made it a static member of the outer class, which is my main class, I believe. Go to the top. Yeah, my main class. So so if you remember, uh, nested classes can see their outer class as private members. So, so we can actually access that directly. That's another reason why I bet the compiler nests this class instead of defining it outside of the containing class. So let's, let's have at it. I'm going to, I need, I need to store count. So let's say int count and int i and the compiler actually kind of warps these names a little bit you can go back and look at the reflector code if you wish and then just so I can initialize these easier without properties let's just make these public and in fact the compiler actually does the same thing so public uh, count public int i and then um let's see we're iterating over ints and so we need a current right and current stores the current random number remember we iterate over several random numbers so now we have the current, which which we're going to return from our enumerator, and the count and the i. So now, and actually, I'm just going to comment out this for loop for now because really the get random numbers returns uh, instance of our object. Um, but we need a way to initialize this count variable. So before I actually return this thing, well, I could rely on I actually could rely on the sugar and just say, hey, count gets count, right? Uh, but that that that's actually syntactic sugar as well to do that. So let's use as little sugar as possible since we are desugarifying. And um, I'm going to just uh, create an instance of one of these things. So get random numbers. Uh, ret gets there we go. Oh, I call it get random numbers class. Get random numbers class ret gets that, and then ret dot count gets whatever count they pass in, and then we're going to return ret. Return red. Okay. So now with move next, move next basically needs to take on the body of this for loop. Right? It needs to basically run the in i get zero, i less than count, i plus plus. And then it also needs to store the next random number. Okay? So let's just put that logic in here. I'm gonna I'm gonna say um let's see, i i needs to be set to zero. So when they call move next for the first time, I need to say int i I don't know why I said int i. I already have an i. So I'm going to say i get 0. Okay. I actually forgot one other thing the compiler creates is a, a state variable which basically is the way that this object keeps track of what happened when. For example, we need to do int i get 0 once and then our state can be like, well, i less than count, i plus plus. So so basically, state when, when we, 
When we call move next, it, it basically turns a little bit into a switch statement. So I'm going to switch on state, and I'm just going to say, hey, case zero. In fact, I'm actually just going to grab this commented code, because I think we're done with this portion down here, and just go straight to our, our move next. Okay, good. Ah, take up the whole screen. Okay. So case zero, we want to say I get zero. And then in here I'm going to say go to case one. All right. And then case one, uh, we got the I get zero. Now we need to check I less than count, I plus plus. So if I less than count, or if I, uh, let's put not in here, if not I less than count, uh, return false. Remember, move, remove next returns a boolean that determines whether there's more elements or not. And if I is not less than count, then return false. I, I could have said greater than or equal to or equal to or whatever, but I'm trying to keep the syntax as much as possible to what the original is. Um, and then we don't, we're not going to do the I++ yet. Remember, a, a for loop does the initialization, which we have here, and then does the check, which we have here, and then it runs the body, which we have here, and then it does the increment. Okay? So, <clears throat> so now we need to run the body. Well, the body does the return thing, but we can't return. We need to store uh, what would be returned when they call current. Remember, in order to get the current item that this enumerator is on, they have to call current, which is a completely different method or property, if you will. So I can't, I can't return uh, a random number from this. This returns a boolean just saying whether there is another element or not. Okay, so I actually have to store the value that I'm going to return here. So which, which we we uh, made made a spot for. We said current. Okay, so current gets ran dot next. So remember this rand object is outside it's it's a member of this main class remember i defined it declared it etc right here so since i can see main classes private data members i'm going to say uh, main class dot rand dot next okay so that's the current item but notice we have return here so i can't just come down here next and say i plus plus no no i have to somehow return here so so I, I am going to return. Let's say um, return true, because there is another element. All right, but I need to make um, I don't know. I have to prepare for the next time that move next is called. And remember, we're just relying on the state variable. When the state, when they initially come into move next, we're going to initialize i to zero. Okay, and then we're going to go to case one. Well, our state's really one at this point, so. Let's say state is one, all right? Just just in, for good measure, and then and then once we come back in, we actually have to continue right here after this after this semicolon, so to say. Well, the next thing after the semicolon is the i plus plus. So what I'm going to do is uh, another case statement: case two. Put a break here, and before we return true right here, we need to say, hey, our state is going to continue off into uh, two. Next time they call move next, jump to case or uh, state equals two. All right. Well, what's what's case two going to do here? Well, we're going to say i plus plus. Okay. Notice I'm just copying this here, and then I'm going to jump into the body of this loop. Well, the body of the loop, or not the body of the loop. I have the the i less than count and the body of the loop here. Where did where's all that located? I I actually coded it up right here. So i plus plus. Let's just say. Go to uh, case one. Okay, interesting. Notice I'm using state to kind of keep track of where we're at in the for loop and the yield return and all that. And um, anyway, whew. And then down here, let's see, go to case one, return false. Now, I could down here just to make the compiler happy, I can say return false. But really, I should assert false. So I should never hit this point in code because my code's written that I should hit either this return or this return, but I'm just going to throw return faults down there to make the compiler happy. So the only thing we have left to do is to implement current, this current property. Well, current is just 
that's this lowercase current. Remember we stored the current element? So I'm going to go down here and uh, all I have to say is return current. The little current. Lowercase current. And that should be it. I think I think that's done. I hope. I hope it is. This video is horrifically long. Please forgive the long video, but but uh, let, let's try this out. Um, let's build it. I'm going to try to step into it. F, uh, F11. When I step in to re get random numbers, now notice I don't have a yield return here, so I'm not going to skip over it anymore. It's actually going to jump in, instantiate our class, rent gets count, so on and so forth. And then, when we say get enumerator, it says, hey, I'll return myself. I'm also an enumerator. Yeah, I, I said I was enumerable, but I'm also an enumerator. I'm playing both roles. So we return this. Okay. And then it just goes into move next. Switch state. Well, I get zero. Go to case one. I less than count. No. Rand next. State two. Uh, and so on and so forth. Print our random number. Here's our random number. Okay. Uh, keep F11. 11 -ing. Switch on state. It jumps to case two. Picks up right where we left off when we left this thing. And the next step in our loop is I++. plus plus. So go to case one. State gets one. I less than count. Get another random number. State gets two. Return true. So on and so forth. And print the random number uh, again. And then here we have two random numbers. So on and so forth. It's kind of fun to code one of these up. And I did leave some details out. The compiler does some other things too. But this is roughly the gist of what the compiler is doing. It's just setting up a switch statement to kind of maintain where things are at and what values need to be returned. But it, it basically forces, if you remember our yield, it's not forcing, but it's adapting our, our method that had the yield in it into one of these objects so that we can have this kind of magic with the yield. But anyway, perfectly long video. Uh, I'll just stop right here.